Okay, once again, let's take a look at the Japan tsunami and figure out what we could have done or what the Japanese people could have done for survival. We'll take a fast look at the disaster that took place. This is where the traffic flows. This is the roadside. This is a truck. Was en route to its destination. There goes the cruise ship. Now, this is the wall, the sea wall, which is about 30 to 40 feet in protection of land. Around the shoreline, this would have been parking lots here with fishing boats parked around the shoreline. The ocean would have been ended off a few miles in with sandy beaches, with sand where you could have some games, playing, having fun on a normal day. This has been around for protection for many years. Yes, there were high tides that, was, that came in, rose below the wall, the height of the wall, which came in maybe a couple of feet, and that was it. It was a normal tide as usual. But after following the magnitude, the great magnitude of earthquake, this unexpected, predicted tsunami came in. Many did not expect it to come in more than was predicted. This will be a stop truck. This truck was in route. Now, if we were in this situation, Let's figure what the drivers may have thought. At that point, should we go through? After seeing the water rising, starting to climb, could we have made a U-turn back? Should we stay here and be safe? I'm pretty sure. Only panic was in their mind. Don't know what to do. Now this is a shell where many people take a rest under their seats, under here. They're relaxing, have some food. It's like an outdoor rest stop. Now we take a focus and we look to see what went on that day as the water kept coming in. Over here is a mountain, a hill at a surface or below that hill at the surface of the ocean line or the wharf line you got houses. We hope that they all evacuated those houses and went, uh, went up on higher land. Many probably felt safe in their houses and stood there, which will be unfortunate for them. We take a look now and see how drastic and fast this water rose. The entire ocean started bringing in cars, these was parked. Now, that ship would have no place to go but to stay there, hoping for the best. Now, right here, right here, 
as the water is flowing, there is a warehouse. Many followed instructions and they evacuated immediately. The only way for survival for the evacuees was to move up on higher ground, which was not much of the case. The only higher ground would be a higher building. This is a dry parking lot. This is the shed. Now the water will rise as beginning. It comes in, it will cover this roadway, which already did. It will rise above this shed. Now imagine you standing in front of the shed, you're here. This water will rise above the shed about 30, 40, 50 feet high. What would you have done at that time? There will be no way of survival if you did not evacuate yourself immediately because it will be as the same of being in an ocean with pressure flowing kickback waves that will be coming in non-stop. And of course, this tsunami was has followed that enormous magnitude of earthquake. Now, this here is the parking lot this is a mechanic shop. Now, this shop here, picture yourself standing here, you here. This water will rise above the floors, above this roof, in an enor enormous pressure, kicking back waves by waves. What would we have done? What would you have done? The only way was to climb to higher grounds, which stood this only building at the end of the disastrous situation. Now, this is the warehouse. This is a tractor trailer. This will be floating up in the air. Now, picturize this. This is one, two, three, four floors on this building. There is two more floors below. One, two, make it a six-story building. Now the water rose and came up to the third floor here, which leaves us one, two, three. Many people are standing there for survival. Spectators are looking on. No one expected the ocean to rise this high. Fortunately for this building, it still stood there with a weak structure. This, this will be gone. This will be gone. Everything here that's inside will be gone. When this is all finished, this ocean water rises and covers the entire land. So it's like being in an entire ocean. And let's take a look and see what went on. Now you got debris, which includes cars, boats, houses that will take down anything. Look how in seconds how this water rose above the roof of this shed. Keep your eyes on the warehouse, which will be deteriorating in seconds this is an overpass that many people will have their refreshments look through those windows look at the scenery outside towards the sea line however today it's not the situation Now, this is inland, 
many people and their houses or homes felt much safer being in their homes, in their houses, not expecting the ocean to come all the way in and make sea level, which now with the force of when this comes down, every debris that will go forward inland will hit all these houses. And that's why there were so many deaths. Many wanted to evacuate, evacuate the situation. Um, as predicted, uh, many probably said, no, we're going to be safe. But that was not the case. Now, remember this. This was the roadway where the trucks were. This is a tractor trailer here. Look, the pressured water will take this tractor trailer and move it around. The warehouse is gone. Everything in its path with the pressure that's waves kicking waves. It will not stop until it hits higher ground, which is the mountains in the rear then it will stand by itself at sea level until it recedes back to sea. Now receding back to sea will take everything in this path that in the surface of the water will go back into the sea which includes bodies, as human beings, their houses, their cars, and everything that was there. Remember this, in a drastic situation, within minutes, this is all gone. The water now seeks its way through inland. There was no stopping back. There was nothing to stop that water. Remember, water makes its own entry if there is a leeway for it to go. It's just like throwing down a cup of water on the ground. Look where it's going to go, to lower land, lower ground. Now the seawall was here for protection that is gone, covered, double the amount, the height of the water doubled twice as the seawall, which make it so vulnerable. Now, this is the building, concrete building. Many would say, yes, it's fortunate that this building stood. That's true. But if this water had continued with pressure and rose a little higher, then I'm pretty sure this would have gone too. However, the structure of the building, we would say simply glorified by strength. Remember the floors? One, two, three, four. There were two more, five, six. You had a mechanic shop here. The water rose all the way above the mechanic shop until it reached the third floor of this building. So, the only higher ground was to be up on the building as some survivors did. Now, I'm pretty sure they went there to spectate to see what's going to go on, what's going to happen. Is it, is it going to be as bad as predicted or not? Fortunately for them, they survived. So those are the few survivors that were found, the fortunate ones that took higher ground, which was the one of the only choice, we would say, is that high building. This is a little roof here from another building. Now, this building if you were to stand here, 
you would have been safe. The water came to the second floor right here, to the height of the roof. But now, the only thing you have to worry about is hoping that the structure don't give way. Now look at this. This tells the story. The houses on the other side, they were all gone because the ocean came above its normal depth. Or its normal height, we would say. So let's take a look at the Japan tsunami. Unfortunately, our hearts goes out to the people of Japan. And remember, folks, I would say this now. Keep in mind, this could happen anywhere. It could also happen to us. Let's hope for the best. Pray for the people of Japan. God bless them. And I will see you on the next episode of Japan Tsunami. Thank you.